Hey guys, today we're at the New York Auto Show and Hyundai has brought along the new Kona EV. This is their smallest EV in the lineup and of course less expensive than the Ionic 5, which is part of why we probably won't see the small battery pack in the Ionic 5 going forward. Now, unfortunately, this is not on the new EGMP platform, so this is not going to charge as quickly as the Ionic 5, about 43 to 45 minutes for a 10% to 80% charge, but you'll be able to go 260 miles on a lot less electricity in this vehicle. As we've seen in the Kona EV for a while, the charge door is up front. I happen to really love that charge location. The design of this is very similar to the rest of the Kona lineup, with this very dramatic LED stripe running right across the front very very flat front end with the same sort of geometric pixel thing that we see in other hyundai models going forward since there's a lot less cooling required in an ev than the gasoline version we don't have the active grill shutters up here all the cooling happens right there we have a 360 degree camera well integrated in the front end full led headlights as well and this also gets the same size growth that we have seen in the rest of the kona lineup this is about six inches longer than the previous generation model so if you're looking for something a little bit less expensive in the EV space with a bit more room than we find in the Chevy Bolt, you might want to take a look at the Kona. Now on the downside, this is not going to be built in the United States. So this is not going to qualify for any portion of the federal tax credit. But you can see it is definitely larger and more accommodating than the previous generation model. And of course, if you want a bright yellow one, you'll be able to get one of these as well. The side styling is basically shared with the rest of the Kona lineup. We don't find the big spoiler that we find in the Kona N line back here, but we do have some cool touches in the rear end design. We have sort of a silver accent stripe right here on top of the hatch, third brake light right there. We do have a windshield wiper in the rear, so if you love EVs with a rear wiper, we have that there. LED light strip running right across the rear, same sort of Hyundai and Kona logo there. Hyundai really loves the sort of LED dot look that we find in a lot of their modern vehicles. So we find that down here at the bottom of the bumper as well. And then on the inside, we find a larger cargo area than before. And it looks like you could put a spare tire in here if you want. This is the same mounting points that we find in the regular Kona, although it doesn't look like there's gonna be one from the factory. I really love the fact that we have that attachment point because this is exactly the same kind of cargo area that we find in the regular Kona. And it's gonna be one of the few EVs where you could actually put a spare tire in there if you wanted to. Closing that hatch, you'll notice the clean lines here with the LED stripe running right across the back and these LED modules lower on the bumper that really mimic what's going on with the headlights up front. And again, those pixel accents down there across the bottom of the bumper. Under the hood, we find basically the same electrical setup that we found before. The electrical architecture has not changed much, so the battery pack is around 65 kilowatt hours. We have a 201 horsepower electric motor, but we do now have a small storage area right there above the electric motor. They have basically designed this after the front trunk storage area that we find in the Ionic 5, and I like the fact that they have finally given us a little bit of storage. The reason there's not a lot of storage is because the motor, the inverter unit, all of that is right there under the hood. Now, the hood does have struts to help keep it up and make that a little bit easier. The first thing you notice when you get inside is we have the new Hyundai steering wheel with no Hyundai logo. Instead, we get the four dot setup that we find in the Ionic 5 and Ionic 6, not illuminated in here, of course. The new steering wheel design, very similar to what we find in the Kona N-Line with some sport grips really around there. Same button modules that we've seen before, but slightly different texturing. Regeneration paddles back there on the back of the steering wheel and the curved screen design from some more recent Hyundais as well. Same sort of fabric pattern over there that we find in the Ionic 5. I really like the layout of this dashboard. I also like the fact that Hyundai is still giving us physical buttons and switches for a lot of things. So infotainment, climate control buttons there. We also have a shifter that's been relocated over here to the steering wheel. It's actually the same one we'll find in the rest of the Kona lineup. So it's not unique to the EV trim. But of course, the sort of uh, neon green stripes are definitely unique to the EV trim. We have fabric accents, a small storage area, decently sized bin style glove compartment right there, USB input, and a feature that we're gonna see in other upcoming vehicles, a button to switch that between charge only and USB input for the system. Not entirely clear why we need that. Qi wireless charging mat there, some buttons for the heated and ventilated seats and the drive mode. Lots of storage going on right there in the middle of the vehicle. And some cool Easter eggs like the texturing and the pattern going on there in the seats and the little green stripe. The rear seats have definitely benefited from the growth in the Kona. I have several inches of headroom back here. Uh, the seats do recline a little bit, so I can actually adjust that with that rear handle, put them in a more upright position. I still have about two inches of headroom left. This seat is almost all the way back in its track, so you can see there's a decent amount of legroom there, but if I scoot over to this side, this is a bit more appropriate of a front seat position for me at six feet tall. You can see that a lot of the growth has gone right back here to the rear seats, which are certainly more comfortable and more accommodating than we find in the Chevy Bolt or the Bolt EUV. Those are the two logical, most direct competitors to the Kona EV. 
Now, again, rather unfortunately, this is not going to be built in the U.S. It's not going to qualify for the federal tax credit. But let me know what you think about that. Do you think that this is going to be uh, of interest to people that are currently shopping for a Bolt or Bolt EUV? Let us know down there in the comments section below. And stay tuned because hopefully I will be driving one of these over the next few months. See all of you later.